Good evening, and welcome to We the Village, produced by Ron Hall, and I am your host, Sharonda Allen. Today, we have the wonderful Sakina Williams. We're interviewing you. Welcome to We the Village. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so first of all, let's um, hear a little bit about yourself. Like, what's your background, you know? Just, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Well, uh, I am um, a mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a mom to a beautiful 13-year-old daughter, Madison. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an only child to my mother, uh, and uh, we're planning a wedding for my mom right now. So mm -hmm. that's taking up a lot of my time and energy right now, but super mm -hmm. excited. Um, between you know planning this wedding and you know finishing up the semester at Seton Hall, where I am a, a professor um, teaching yoga theory and application, um, you know very little free time right now. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I, you you have a business. Yes. And it's called BK Buddha. Yes. So BK Buddha is a traveling um, yoga studio, and basically my student is someone who would not go into a yoga studio so um older adults el you know the elderly older adults um right. athletes mm -hmm. um disabled children in schools um at-risk youth um anyone who cannot afford to step foot into a yoga studio or for whatever reason won't go into a yoga studio so that's who i consider uh, my student Right. So how long have you been practicing yoga? I've been practicing yoga for over 20 years now. I've only been teaching for four, <clears throat> but um, I've been practicing uh, a large part of my life. So going from uh, just practicing yoga to teaching, like what, what made you want to teach it, you know, outside of just practicing yoga for relaxation? Because you are my yoga teacher <laughs> yes. and I enjoy it. It's, it's such a, a, an activity that it's not really weight bearing, it's not super cardio, but I feel worked out afterwards. I feel a lot of flow. Like, so what made you want to get it? Because I, I, I like doing it, but I don't want to teach it. But right. <clears throat> what made you want to teach yoga? Um, just understanding and learning the benefits, how it's helped me personally. Mm -hmm. um, I started um, yoga, you know, well before I, you know, had my daughter, but uh, prenatal yoga, you know, really helped me throughout my difficult pregnancy and, um, you know, just understanding that there's so many people out there that need like a mind, body, spirit connection, right. um, who are intimidated to go into gyms, who don't know anything about, you know, the mind, body connection. And, uh, you know, being able, you know, I have all this knowledge and all this information and just wanting to share this with people. Um, so I think just wanting to share the information is what probably prompted me to become a teacher. Excellent, I know you've always, been like, uh, hey, I'm going to be a teacher type yes. thing. Always yes. English was your thing, I remember. Yes. Um, and that was, yeah, the classroom is not, the, <laughs> <laughs> the traditional classroom is not a space for me at all. I tried it and it was just, no. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's interesting because a lot of us are teachers, but our classroom may be different than other people's classrooms. Right, right. And I'm glad that you said that because some people do want to teach things, but maybe the system that's you know set up mm -hmm. may not be for you because it, it takes a lot of getting used to. It does. There's a lot of ups and downs and edicts from the state and things yes, like yes. that that you know you may not feel are, are sensible in the first place. And once they they say okay we got something new, all that stuff is thrown out and it never really meant anything anyway. Correct. Right. So it's like it's almost like a joke. It's like jumping through hoops and then it changes and there's something new that just pops up. Right. So. I totally understand. So who should be practicing yoga? Everyone. Yoga is for everybody and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody and everybody. Yes. Okay. So, you know, what kind of yoga do you do? Because I know there's different forms of yoga, Bikram and hot and all those different Yeah, there are different um, types of yoga. Um, I basically, <clears throat> I have a yin practice um, for myself, but I teach hatha yoga. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, teaching the asanas, um, which are the poses, and the pranayama, which are breathing exercises. Um, so uh, teaching um, hatha is you know, just the basics um, for my classes um, and for my um, workshops that I host. So that form, is, it doesn't get very pretzely, you know, people with arms well, all in the head. Well, um, there are you know, different 
levels of asanas. Um, so, you know, the pretzel comes when it comes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some days that I could stand on my head and there's some days that I can't. So it just, you know, it just depends on where you are in your, you know, in your body on a particular day. Right. So the different types of yoga um, does not necessarily mean, you know, different poses. You know, mm -hmm. they're, the poses are the poses, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, your ability and, you know, where you are, like I said, in your um, skin that day. Right. Okay. I appreciate that because some people, I think, are intimidated by yoga because they see people with their foot up behind their neck and they're like, uh, I can't, if that's what it is. Yeah. You know? And I think it has to do, you know, it's, it's an Eastern cultural thing, Far Eastern, and I think some people, if it's not, you know, running around the track or playing basketball, they don't understand right. the, not just the, the fitness part of it, but the, the mind. Yes, the connection um, yeah. of the mind, body, and the spirit. Um, yes. So um, you bring up an interesting point about it being, you know, Eastern, you know, Western thought, you know, mm -hmm. we are just so conditioned to want to physically, you know, get our bodies in order. But if your mind isn't, sweat. yeah, and if your mind isn't there, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, achieve those, um, you know, those fitness goals that you set for yourself, like, you know, running track or, you know, bench pressing or things like that. You have to have, you know, your head has to be in it as well. Right. So, so it's not just the movement. So I'm, I, I know that you've had to have some deeper training. So tell me about your teacher training. So uh, in 2015, I um, was laid off from my corporate job, and uh, I've been trying to figure out when can I go for yoga certification, yoga teacher training. So I, you know, researched schools. I found a school that I really wanted to go to. So I went for my 200-hour uh, yoga teacher training um, in New York, and uh, that experience was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I had a yoga teacher um, who encouraged us you know at some point you guys have to go to india you have to you know go to see where it all started mm -hmm. um you know make that journey at some point if you're serious about you know living a yoga lifestyle teaching yoga um so last march i went to i traveled to rishikesh india which is the yoga capital of the world and did an advanced certification um a 300 hour certification um and I've done, you know, little certifications here and there, you know, equaling a thousand hours now mm, of nice. uh, yoga certification and so, trainings. Yeah. Uh, you know, talk some more about your visit to India. You know, I, I, I teach world history and African-American history. And what I do explain to the students is that there were so many religions that started in India. Mm -hmm. And not that yoga is a religion, but it is a spiritual practice. Yeah, well, yeah. Mind, body, spirit mm -hmm. practice. So, you know, talk a little bit about your experience with your training in India. What was what was that about? And like, what was what was different about going to the school in India as opposed to the school in New York? Well, a lot of um, you know people who live in India who uh, live a yoga lifestyle. Not everyone there, you know you know, lives a, practices yoga or lives a um, yoga lifestyle, which is, you know, a huge misconception. You know, right. people think, oh, India, every Indian can put their head, their feet behind their head, but you know, it's right. not that at all. Okay. Um, prime example, um, the founder of the school that I attended, he's just a regular guy, 30 something year old guy. Um, and we had the privilege and opportunity to go to his house and to meet his family, you know, mm -hmm. his, um, paternal, um, sorry, maternal grandmother who was, you know, well into her 90s was there. His aunties, everybody, you know, they all live in the, you know, living in the same house on the same compound. And uh, his aunt was so funny. She's like, yeah, he's, you know, this big yoga guy. You know, you see billboards of him. He has schools all over. Um, but, you know, he still has to take out the trash. Like, <laughs> don't get it twisted. Like, he's, you know, right. he's, she, she's like, he's a yogi. You know, we aren't, but he is. Right. Um, so you know it's 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 very interesting um, when you think about you know India. Right. You know we think about uh, Delhi or New Delhi. Mm -hmm. um, you know having like the open sewers and the animals on the road and the smog mm -hmm. and you know what you see on TV or in movies. <laughs> um, but where I actually was was in um, northern India. You know like in the mountains. Um, mm -hmm. You know very fresh air, clean air. Um, the river, Ganges River, was you know very clean. Um, 
as opposed to in the South. And uh, on the weekends, so Sunday was our day off. Um, we practiced every day except for Sunday, mm -hmm. um, 12, 14 hours a day. You mm -hmm. know, our day started at 6 a.m. Um, and it, you know, past seven. And um, we would, Sundays would be our days off. So that would be the day that we would go, you know, buy our toiletries, get food, hang out, you know, go to the tea bars or things like that. And Rishikesh, you can think of it like, I guess, New York, where on weekends people would come to, you know, take tours or see museums. Like people would visit Rishikesh to see the temples, um, to go rafting, you know, so that was like a, you know, became like a touristy um, area, not just for, uh, you know, Westerners or people who came from all over the world, but, you know, for actual Indians too, would wow. come to visit. So um, seeing that, you know, that change on Sundays, it was like, you know, wow, like during the week, everyone's like going to and from classes and temples and, um, and then seeing, you know, Sunday, it just completely change. Wow. Yeah. So you were really, you really had a chance to really experience India because you were there for about six weeks. Yeah, I was there for six weeks. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I, you know, we're travelers. We've been to different countries and um, as we kind of had a conversation about not staying at the resort all the time. Yes. You get a chance to get fully immersed in the Ex culture. In the culture. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you travel anywhere in the world, you know, why, you know, pay all this money to go all this way and you aren't talking to anyone that's from that country or that place you're in a resort with other people from new york or other people from right. new jersey <laughs> Down the um, road. you know <laughs> so you're not really experiencing the the country you know people call themselves well traveled but you you know if you haven't stepped foot out of your marriott resort then you know are you really experiencing the culture are you understanding you know what's going on there you know right. um so being able to be a part of that um, you know, the culture and really talk to people and, you know, understand and you know, have an opportunity to meet um, our teacher's family and nice. understanding how, you know, our everyday life is, you know. Right. And like anywhere in the world, you know, there's a lot of poverty, there's, you know, homelessness, you know, and there are a lot of animals. <laughs> <laughs> so that was something that, you know, getting used to the animals, um, monkeys, cows, dogs, just everywhere, just interacting with the people, you know, it would be nothing for you to just like hang out and, you know, you're at a cafe and there's a cow, he's at the cafe too, or the monkey's jumping in and stealing your food. Wow. Yeah. One, one thing I did notice about um, going to other countries, the dogs are just seem a little bit more docile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the dogs that just walk around, they're just so yeah. nice and cute. Yeah. So were the dogs in India docile as yes. well? Yes. I, I don't. I don't know what it is about American dogs. It's <laughs> ferocious. Like, why are you so angry? Well, they take after us. Yeah, they just kind of pushy and, yeah. and rude, and they just take care of after us. You're right, because you know Lulu beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I told her she stink because she don't like to take baths, and she came and beat me up. But um, <laughs> it's a side part. She's so cute. She is, oh my God, that's my grand puppy, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, so you know. Um, you talked about the animals and the, the what about the sights, the sounds, the smells? It was like HD, 3D, Technicolor. Like everything was just like <laughs> sensory overload. It was right. so much to see, to smell. Like right. the, it was just vibrant, yeah. you know. So you were like, you know, the first couple of days I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what's going on? Right. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, that alone, you know, just experiencing. Um, I'll share, you know, with you some of my pictures. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, having to see just the, you know, the art, the street art in itself is beautiful. The textiles, um, you know, just every, people's everyday wear, like, you know, the saris, the clothes, the traditional right. wear, just everything was just so beautiful. That's lovely. So beautiful. Yeah, and it's, it's like you said, you got to get off the resorts. You got to yeah. see the real people, the real culture. And on top of that, you know, as, as we say mind, body, spirit, and I mentioned it a little earlier, but is yoga a religion? No, okay. <laughs> yoga is not a religion. Okay. Um, it can, it's actually like a, a science, really. Yes. It's a science. If you know anything about biology and how, <laughs> I know you do, <laughs> and how uh, the bodies work, yes. you know, it's, uh, you know, your mind, body, and your spirit is all connected. Absolutely. Um, you know, and people think you have to be Hindu to practice yoga or you know 
there are yoga practitioners from every walk of life. Yeah. You know? And it's not, you know, you pray, you pray to whoever you pray to, you know, it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with you know, being a yogi, you know, right. to say. I think it has to do with mindfulness. And oh, times, for sure. Yeah, mindfulness. You know, prayer is about mindfulness. It is. And sometimes people don't understand what prayer is, is centering yourself, is focusing yourself, regardless of who or what you pray to. Exactly. Or what your religion is. Yes. And um, But some people just do the spiritual part, mm -hmm. but they don't do the mind, mind. The, the cognition, the yeah. metacognition. And um, I think that, you know, that's what's missing in a lot of things. So, you know, just like in schools, you yeah. think that yoga should be taught in schools. I definitely think yoga should be taught in schools. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, <laughs> our children, they are so unfocused. They have mm -hmm. so many distractions. You know, mm -hmm. this technology, the video games, the phones, the TV, um, you know, you just lose focus, you know, mm -hmm. and it's hard for, you know, to concentrate. We have all these standards, these standardized tests and, you know, mm -hmm. studying. It's just, you know, kids need a focus. They do. They need to focus, and mm -hmm. they don't know how to focus because there's so many distractions. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in teaching mindfulness, you know, people are rude. <laughs> and I think <laughs> the older you get, the ruder you become. It's just, I don't understand. So the, um, you know, incorporating mindfulness and yes. teaching people to be kind and to be nice, you know. Mm -hmm. Cognizance. I think that, yes. Oh, yes. yeah, definitely. That's, it's necessary. Yeah. It's necessary. So now with that mindfulness, like how important is meditation to your yoga practice? Because it takes mindfulness to meditate, you know? So mm -hmm. how important is that for you? Well, um, another thing is people don't understand meditation, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, it's, oh, I can't clear my mind, I'm too distracted. Um, there's no right or wrong way to meditate, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, I meditate every day. Um, 6 a.m. every day I wow. um, meditate you know sometimes I go back to bed sometimes I don't it just <laughs> depends on the day but mm -hmm. um, yeah every day I meditate um, and you know for me it helps me to center my day or my life you know if I have so much going on and I know I'm gonna have a long day ahead of me um, you know having that you know 30 minutes to myself to get centered you know right if I've had a, a rough previous day or if I didn't sleep well, knowing that I have the, you know, those 30 minutes um, to you know, center myself to think about what I have to do for the day or for the week or you know, all the things coming at me. You know? Right, it, it sounds it, it like, makes, it makes what, I'm sorry? No, I'm saying it makes a difference. Yeah, it, but it totally it, makes a difference. But it sounds like your work is about relaxation. So what are well, some of the challenges if your well, work is like relaxation? Well, with yoga teachers, um, especially if you teach a lot and teach a lot of different people and different mm -hmm. types of people, you know, you lose your own practice. So um, I have carved out that 30 minutes of meditation for myself, but I don't get to practice every day. Right. Like I don't get on my mat every day because, mm. you know, I'm running, you know, to campus or I have private um, <clears throat> yoga uh, clients mm -hmm. or, you know, I have to go teach a class or a workshop or, you know, give a talk. Um, you know, so out of those, you know, eight to 10 hours in the day, I'm not on my mat. Right. So um, that's where the challenges come for me, where, um, you know, I have to wait until, you know, the weekend or, you know, try to, you know, get an hour in, you know, just mm -hmm. to get on my mat. So for me, that's the biggest challenge, you know, losing my own practice. Wow. And that's I think, uh, you know, talking to different teachers, you know, that's, you know, across the board, that's what, um, you know, where the challenges come in. Right. So those are just some of the challenges. But mm -hmm. what has, you know, how, how has yoga changed your life? And what sorts of obstacles has uh, yoga helped you to overcome in your life? Um, it's helped me to realize that, you know, things are going to happen how they <laughs> happen. Life. And your life is going to happen, you know. And understanding that it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. That it's okay to put myself first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the cliche, not pouring from an empty cup you know you can't right. help anyone else if you you know if you aren't you know um, it always brings me back and everyone talks about this when you go to some of these you know mindful talks how like when you're on the airplane you know traveling with a child or with a older adult and they tell you to you know 
if the oxygen mask come down, put it on yourself first Absolutely. before you use to somebody else. You know, you mm -hmm. have to take care of yourself before, you know, being able to help other people. Right. Um, so learning that and understanding it and then also practicing it, right. um, you know, has really helped me, you know, in my life. You know, now being a single mother and understanding that, you know, if I'm sick or if I'm not given, you know, some self-care, then, you know, it's going to affect my child. Right. You know, it's going to affect my students, right. you know. So I, you know, that is one of the things that it's really helped me to um, learn me more. Right. I think, yeah. Right. So now, in, in that vein, how do you build relationships with your students, you know, your yoga students? How does, how does that work? Um, so this is my uh, second semester teaching um, at Seton Hall University. Um, I'm teaching um, two classes, yoga theory and application. And uh, the biggest takeaways, you know, at the end of each semester, you know, they have to do an evaluation. Mm -hmm. And the um, biggest takeaways I've gotten is that I'm not like other professors. I, you know, they can talk to me. You know, they feel comfortable in my class. You know, even though it is an undergrad, you know, three credit, you know, legit course, you know, it doesn't feel like a, you know, a, a college course. Right. Um, they feel that, you know, the tools that I give them in the classroom are not only for the class, but, you know, they can use it in other areas of their life, which is what my goal is as a college professor, um, to take what, I teach you, you know, into your, not only your other classes, but in, you know, life after college. Right. And I think yeah. that is something that um, our, I, I, I actually pitched mindfulness and meditation to my district. They trained a few people, but, you know, I think that sometimes, you know, you pick people who don't live it and it doesn't really get yeah, rolled yeah. out. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to can't. practice what you preach. I mean, yeah. it's all these <laughs> cliches, you know, but you have to, like, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. you, ha it, you, ha you have to. Yeah. It's just like um, things that make me laugh are when, you know, people who uh, give lectures or talks about marriage and you've never been married mm -hmm. or about uh, child rearing. <laughs> and you, you know, not saying that you have to have a physical child, you know, a biological birth child, but you've never been around children. So how are you telling me, you know, how, to, you know, you should raise children or, you know, teach children? Right, but I, 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 but I do think that real life experience. Yes. Okay. Yes. And not just because somebody just sent you, you know, um, is very important yep. because as parents, you know, like you can talk about what you want to do, but you don't know what kind of personality, you know. You don't. And and you, you know, I think that you know, in just dealing with people, and and dealing with yoga. I know that people may come with baggage. Oh yeah, for sure. They may come with emotion that they, maybe people cry afterwards because- They do. Yeah, because they yoga do. is just that powerful. It's just that pulling. We're so out of tune with ourselves. Yes. And for you know that class, that hour, that hour and 15 minutes that you're in that class, you know, mm -hmm. it's you. Yeah. You know, you have to, you know, get yourself on that mat and off the mat after that hour. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do in between is about you. It has nothing to do with anybody else in your life. Right. Um, and people are, aren't comfortable with themselves. Yeah, they, they're not. They're not. And I think that's where the, you know, the yoga intimidation comes in also oh, because yeah. it's just like, it's just me. I have to do this, you know, for me, for myself, you know. So right. I think that... Uh, being able to be comfortable with yourself is, um, you know, w like I said, where the fear comes from. Right, and so I, I with people having those apprehensions, you know, maybe they want a smaller group or larger group or one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. what is your preference, you know, as far as teaching yoga? Do you like smaller groups, large um, groups? It, it, it just always depends on what I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, I'm gonna be speaking at the Student Leadership Conference in Orlando um, in November, Yay. and uh, <laughs> you know, so it's, student leaders, uh, college students who will move on to become leaders. Right. And um, this is the first year this conference has been around since um, the early 80s. And this is the first year that they're incorporating a wellness aspect wow. of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in talking with um, the producers, um, I'm like, you know, we need something not only for the students, but for the advisors too. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you know, the three <laughs> workshops that I'm going to be doing are both for advisors and for the student leaders. Right. Um, just, you know, helping them to, you know, you do all this work you put into being a leader, but, mm -hmm. you know, what about yourself? You know, right. your own self-care, you know, mm -hmm. little things that you can do to be, you know, successful in whatever profession you choose or, you know, a classroom. I think with myself being a pygmy Amazon warrior, I have to focus more on self-care. Yeah. Um, that's a big thing because we always push, push, push. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you talked about the wellness aspect. I know you mentioned um, not too long ago, you're working on a wellness fair or some sort of expo event. What yes. is that gonna be? So um, we don't have a date yet. We're still looking at locations. Um, but it's gonna be like a one day retreat. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be open to whoever wants to attend. Right. And it's going to be uh, self-care, you know. It's mm -hmm. going to be everything from journaling to mindfulness, uh, meditation, uh, yoga, mm -hmm. um, diet. Yeah. Hydration, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's in, in, in diet, yeah. So, so with this fair that you're working on, you know, I know that it will... You know, I, I'm going to put it all over my social media, you know. <laughs> I like to support and push things that I think are wonderful and amazing, and I think it is, you know. How can we make yoga more accessible to people? Um, ask questions, mm -hmm. you know. If you see someone carrying that yoga mat, ask them where they're going. If there's mm -hmm. a yoga studio in your neighborhood that you, you know, kind of intimidated, I guarantee you if you walk in there, you know, whoever is at that front desk or whoever, you know, is there at the time, you know, won't make you feel uncomfortable. Ask right. questions. You right. know, there are tons of apps online. Um, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll answer yes. any question for you. Um, I think, you know, it's being, you know, aware, awareness is is the only way to do it, either by uh, providing, <coughs> excuse me, providing information, mm -hmm. or just you know simply asking questions. Right. So tell me, what is the most rewarding part of being a yoga teacher? Oh, what is the most rewarding part of being a yoga teacher? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's not one specific thing. Um, <laughs> I look forward to new students right. and seeing okay. the, the progress mm -hmm. and not just physical progress, you know, mental you know, progress. I was teaching um, a group of um, older adults, you know, senior citizens or older adults as I like to call them. Right. And, you know, a lot of them coming in with a different ailment, arthritis, you know, stroke recovery, you know, I do stroke recovery. Mm -hmm. um, coming from, you know, they don't like their physical therapists, you know, so they rather come to yoga, you know. And just seeing, you know, how they've evolved from, you know, being scared mm -hmm. of their own bodies, um, anticipating pain. Right. Where a lot of times, you know, it's not really pain. You think it's gonna hurt and it probably doesn't hurt or it's not gonna it hurt. <laughs> but, um, you know, seeing people, you know, build the confidence and, you know, self-love in themselves yeah. you know that part for me is very rewarding you know well i just want to say thank you for <laughs> sharing this wellness with the world thank you for sharing it with me yes and, and thank you for always supporting i try I my love best that. <laughs> <laughs> i love that i try yes. i try to get yes. over there to brooklyn mm -hmm. and you know people are like you all the way to brooklyn for yoga i sure do because i think it's the energy that's mm -hmm. important too and I just want to say thank you for coming on to We The Village. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. And namaste. Namaste. <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in to We The Village.